interesting company we have recommend or uh, sorry we have interviewed them mm-hmm. in the past yeah several exactly times. Um, so yeah, Zedcore Inc, ZDC on the TSX Venture, uh, currently trading at a price of $1.33 with about $121 million market cap. Uh, so they provide technology-based security and su- surveillance uh, services in Canada and the US. Uh, it engages in the provision of rental, service, and remote monitoring of its proprietary mobile iz security towers i've got one up on the screen on the right hand side so you can see here uh, and they also have uh, surveillance and monitoring of fixed site locations as well as uh, security personnel uh, in q4 of 2023 50 uh, percent of its revenue came from the construction industry 16 uh, percent from the energy and about 14 percent from pipeline now uh, looking at the stock chart here, uh, the company has done quite well, uh, up over 100% year to date, driven by strong growth in the business. And looking at this slide here from their investor presentation, we can see the company has been aggressively adding their mobile IZ uh, towers, uh, looking to end 2024 with approximately 1400 towers and uh, 2025 with approximately 2200 towers. And let's take a look at how this growth has translated to the financials. So for Q1 2024, revenue was down 5% year over year uh, due to reductions in revenue for Zedcor's uh, ancillary services of security personnel, camera sales, and other service revenue. And the decrease was driven largely by reduced service revenues as non-pipeline security towers do not need significant service. Uh, adjusted EBITDA was down 11% to $1.9 million in the quarter, uh, due in part to higher SG&A costs uh, as a result of a larger geographical footprint and increased sales staff. Uh, net income was a loss of 470000 or one cent per share uh, compared to a gain of 752000 or one cent per share in Q1 of 2023. And looking at the balance sheet, the company has net debt of approximately $27.36 million and a trailing net debt to EBITDA multiple of about 3.7 times. Uh, but this doesn't include the company's recent May 2024 equity raise uh, for gross proceeds of about $15 million. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning uh, when we're looking at the financials here is that on June 30th of 2021, uh, the company sold the assets of its rental segment to a company uh, controlled by a director of the company for gross proceeds of $11.3 million. In addition to the gross proceeds, uh, the company will receive a monthly management fee for up to 36 months after the closing date, so up to June 30th of 2024, which is we're basically here. Uh, plus, the company may also receive an annual bonus payment of 35% of EBITDA in excess of certain annual targets. And as such, uh, for the year ended December 30, 31st, uh, 2023, the annual bonus was $2.16 million, uh, which hit the financials in Q2 of 2023. So taking this into account in the trailing results, uh, Q2 2023 net income was actually a gain of just 313000 rather than a gain of $2.47 million. Uh, and you can see there I have the adjustment in red up on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. So taking this other into this other income into account, which is expected to event, uh, end eventually, uh, the company has negative trailing 12 month earnings, uh, but their adjusted EBITDA already takes into account removing this other income. So on a trailing enterprise value to adjusted EBITDA basis, the business trades at about 20 times and uh, with a price to, fr- to adjusted free cash flow multiple of about 18 and a half times. So as I said, uh, subsequent events following Q1 2024 ended March 31st, uh, 2024, uh, include a bought deal financing where Zedcor issued 15 million common shares at a price of $1 per share uh, for gross proceeds of 15 million. Uh, So after taking this into account, uh, the balance sheet will look more healthy uh, with the added cash, uh, but the company's share count is now up to 92.36 million shares. Uh, and as you can see from the chart that I have up on the screen, the company has been regularly diluting shareholders to maintain its growth and health of its balance sheet. So to conclude, 
Uh, Zedcore is an attractive company allowing uh, companies in need for security to avoid costly human guard services and use cheaper technological services. Uh, 75% of their revenue is recurring. Uh, they've got stable utilization rates of 80 to 90%, and they have been uh, growing its mobile IZ fleet at an aggressive pace uh, with targets of about 1,400 towers by the end of 2024 and about 22. 100 towers by the end of 2025. In one of our past uh, calls with management, uh, one of our questions was, uh, what could derail your story? They did say that if they were unable to maintain the utilization rate, for, you know, around 80 to 90%. Um, so that is obviously something uh, to keep an eye on, but they have been doing a good job of maintaining that. Uh, the company has strong insider ownership of about 45%. So realistically, uh, dilution is something that you would think management will eventually want to avoid uh, to maintain their own stake in the business. Uh, the company has been funding growth primarily through debt and share issuances. Uh, and of course, it would be nice to see that, that inflection point when the company will begin to self-fund with internally generated cash flow. Uh, the balance sheet is reasonable following the recent equity raise, um, but in my opinion, the company remains somewhat expensive at about 20 times trailing enterprise value to adjusted EBITDA. Now, compared to a majority of businesses that trade on the TSX venture, I will say that Zedcor is quite attractive and someone could take a speculative position in the stock. However, for our growth at a reasonable price investment strategy, it's just a bit pricey uh, right now. And as mentioned, the company has been diluting shareholders and will likely continue to do so in the near term until we see that inflection point uh, with cash flow generation being a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, that's my take. I mean, it's a good business, um, but you know, as the one listener will hate to hear, uh, we monitor it at this point. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an interesting business. The, the company interviewed well, the management team, team, uh, they seem competent. Uh, you know, the, again, we'll note as Brennan pointed out, net debt to EBITDA was 3.7 prior mm -hmm. to that raise. Uh, that's getting on the high end. Uh, we wouldn't like to see much more debt added to the balance sheet at that point than they had to raise. So one point seven after the May raise, but Correct. they, you know, issue shares again, there's potential dilution there, 15 million. That's probably going to be the playbook, but even the, you know, on a evaluation basis, EV to sales is 6.13. That's relatively high for a business of this type, yeah. 20 times trailing EBITDA. Um, again, relatively high and, you know, there's not a ton of actual EPS from this business right now. So and you're only talking about, you know, almost, you know, getting up to 90 to 100 million shares outstanding, 6 million in quarterly revenues. Yes, that can accelerate, uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's not accelerate. It's not like it's growing quarter to quarter at 10 percent and compounding on that or anything like that. You know, just not quarter over quarter, but in quarter sequentially, it's not compounding at a massive growth rate. Perhaps that happens at some point. It's not there right now. There's higher valuations on the company. And, and that's uh, where we're stringent on our criteria. We, we just won't pay anything for a business, even if we like the company, like the management team. At this point, it just it looks a little pricey for us. And uh, there is, uh, you know, if there is anything that, uh, that comes in that hits the stock, a negative consequence, a loss of customers, a massive comp competitor that comes into the space, um, then when you're trading at premium valuations, you just and you don't have the cash rich balance sheet to uh, withstand that net cash is what I'm talking about without raising it in the equity markets, uh, then, you know, you have downside. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we do the risk to reward on it. And right now the valuation is a little high for us. Well, also, just to add the uh, the balance sheet as well. So I noticed their net debt to EBITDA 3.7 times. Um, but the company's not profitable, right? So just in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, what does that mean, that multiple? Well, that's just measuring the 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 debt relative to the the earnings before interest and taxes and depreciation. And, you know, typically we would say if it's a cyclical industry, you know, less than one, most industries between one to 2.5, it's usually good. Uh, so 3.7, that's, you know, that's over what we would generally consider to be acceptable for most industries but you know we're also assuming profitability so if you're not even generating uh net profit and you have debt that could be that could be an issue so yep okay 
<laughs> well, I think that uh, ends it on Zedcar.